Hello friends, so we reached the final stage of our journey, today is our last class that is our conclusion. I am going to wind up and I am going to uh, sort of uh, give you an overview of what we have been doing all along. So, please take this class also very seriously because you will be revising a lot of what we have already done and perhaps you may learn something new, a thing, uh, something new or uh, perhaps you know you may be able to have clarification of uh, some concepts. So, reading, writing, speaking, grammar particularly with reference to passive voice, tenses, auxiliaries, we will do uh, vocabulary, word formation and uh, the kind of scientific uh, uh, vocabulary that we have been doing all these hours, all these weeks over a period of seven and a half weeks. So, um, we last time if you remember we did something called film review and we were talking about films such as Interstellar and Matrix and I am very sure those are some of your favorite films. Um, in the same line you can also think of writing a book review. I am sure that you all read books at least your textbooks or books related to your um, uh, domain scientific and a technical domain. So, remember what is a book review again like a movie it is uh, you if you read a books like a book like a movie text then book is also analyzed on the basis of plot characters style and content. Remember the way you review a movie a book review is also an opinion piece it reflects it mirrors your personality your taste your um, style. So, um, let me show you this excellent book review take a look at this slide here we go. In Neuromancer, William Gibson popularized the idea of cyberspace, a consensual hallucination created by millions of connected computers. This network can be jagged into while in the real world characters flit from Tokyo to the sprawl and urban agglomeration running down the east coast of the US gritty urban clinics carry out horrendous sounding plastic surgery, a junkie hacker case is coaxed into hacking the system of a major corporation. What once seemed impossibly futuristic is now eerily familiar. Look at the variety of word formation, popularized, you get this word from popular, popular movie, popular book, it is an adjective, but popularized it becomes your, ad, uh, it becomes your verb. So, while I'm, why I am doing all these things today? So, that I refresh whatever you have been doing so far. Um, look at the variety of the uh, vocabulary here, I have highlighted some of the words for you and I would like you to look up there, word category whether they are ver uh, verbs or nouns or adverbs etcetera and also look up their meaning. So, flit from Tokyo to the sprawl urban agglomeration, gritty, what is gritty and when do we use gritty? So, do not use words like gritty and agglomeration or flitting just like that. There is a tendency among students especially when they think they are writing a formal piece of uh, work then they could use big words and impress the reader which is so not true. You have to use the right kind of vocabulary whether uh, a common word or uh, a rare word or something and um, uh, something that is less less common maybe more color uh, collocational. So, try to use the right word at the right time. Now, look uh, words like gritty urban clinics, junkie hacker they fit so well in this kind of a passage which is all about science fiction and then impossibly futuristic look at the collocation futuristic an adverb and uh, impossibly is an adverb, futuristic is a is an adjective. So, impossibly futuristic bringing collocating bringing together of an adverb and an adjective, eerily familiar look at the uh, look at the way uh, the entire thing works eerily familiar. So, adverb and 
adjective coming together. Now, um, I would like you to do an exercise uh, based on uh, what you have read just now. In pairs, discuss what is science fiction. I want you to talk, practice among yourself what is science fiction and give reasons for the popularity of science fiction. Remember, you will have to talk in various situations, academic or semi formal, and then you should be able to express your views. This is one um, activity where you can practice these things. Also, I would like you to discuss your favorite science fiction book and use some of the words that I am going to give you. Please take them down, note them down. Um, I am going to give you some, a list of positives as well as a list of negatives and you can use whatever you want. So, a positive, superb, striking, sensational, surprising, charming. Negative, it lacks something, conventional, run of the mill, some of us may regret, regret what? you have to fill in. I okay? will repeat positive, superb, striking, sensational, uh, surprising, charming and negatives, it lacks conventional, run of the mill, some of us may regret etcetera. Now, I um, will take you to another exercise and here you will be reading two book reviews of the same book. The book is uh, the Andromeda strain. It is by uh, Michael Crichton, maybe some of you are familiar with it. I want you to compare the two reviews in terms of their tone, secondly style and language and vocabulary. And see, um, if you read the book, whether your opinions, do they match? these writers opinions. So, let us look at this. An upfront confession, Michael Crichton is one of my favorite authors. I love how realistic his science is and he writes suspense quite well. I was therefore excited to read his first book unfortunately and Romina Strain did not live up to these expectations. The suspense is killed right off the bat. Now, look at this very interesting use of the language right off the bat, right? just you know it is like uh, you, you are out at the first ball uh, of, a, of a, a cricket match. So, it is like um, at the outset itself suspense is killed with the narration style. The story is told as if it is a report being written up by someone after the event. This means that we not only know uh, that some of the humanity survives this impending doom, but that society is still who are held together enough to want a report. If I am sure that everything is going to turn out hunky dory in the end, I am just not going to be all that concerned throughout the book. Similarly, the characters are not fleshed out as well as in later books. They are basically their careers. Um, here is the bacteriologist, here is the professor, here is the surgeon. They do not come across as real rounded people. So, I completely fail to care about them at all. This is not good for suspense, but because if I do not care about the characters, I am not going to worry about them too much. Observe the tone, the language and style and vocabulary. It is very first person, reviewer is telling you up front what he or she enjoys. Okay? First person narrative, I, first person singular, this is a writer's opinion. Look at the second sample, same novel, same book reviewed by some other person. The Andromeda strain reads more like a scientific review than a novel. It contains many diagrams, screenshots and technical computer printouts that at least try to convince the reader of the scientific seriousness of the issue. A detailed explanation accompanies almost every printout and paragraphs quoted from actual research papers explain each idea presented. In the late 60s, computers were still novel devices, so Crichton even bothers to include an explanation 
about converting decimal numbers to binary, but perhaps the most obvious indication about the author's frame of mind comes from the fact that a detailed list of references is appended to the book, an uncommon sight in novels. So, let us see and I would like uh, you to do this exercise among yourselves that which is a better review and why, discuss it among yourselves. Now, here uh, I am going to give you one exercise, write a book review of your favorite book, practice writing, you should cover who was your favorite character and why, did the character feel real to you, did the story keep you guessing and what was the favorite part of the book and why and what did the book finally make you do. Okay, you want to learn something more about that idea or area or uh, mm, something whatever the content or subject matter of the book is and you want to learn more about it and uh, did the story or did the book, uh, did it grip you and did it keep you turning the pages. So, that is the quality hallmark of a book, otherwise you should be able to say that you know the book was just not interesting enough, not uh, gripping enough to hold my interest. So, this is what you should do in order to develop your writing and speaking better and more clearly. Here is a slide, please look at this slide, here are some references for book review. Now, um, I am going to give you uh, something uh, to read, but pre-reading exercise before I uh, show you the slide, I want you to do something in groups, uh, in uh, groups of pair discuss who is your favorite cartoonist and you should be able to talk about some of the memorable cartoon characters and situations that this person has created. I will repeat who is your favorite cartoonist and you should be able to talk about some of the memorable cartoon characters and situations this person has created. And let us now look at the slide. I am giving you this exercise, at the same time I have also highlighted simple past tense verbs. So, please look at that also. R K Lakshman had the common touch which appealed to the common man. Now, please note had appealed all these are past tense and this is uh, a passage about the great cartoonist R K Lakshman and not surprisingly he created his own common man. The character caught the public's at imagination through the length and breadth of India to become a national icon. Lakshman's draughtsmanship was impeccable, his knowledge of anatomy, eye for detail, while drawing background and dexterous brushwork rendered his, wor his art world class. He was never a stylist, his work was uh, founded on realism without fancy abstractions. He was inspired in part by David Lowe, one of Britain's greatest cartoonists, but Lowe used fewer lines and less details and that painstaking elimination of unnecessary detail gave, so gave is also uh, an example of past his work, its simplicity uh, and strength. However, it was again a past tense, Lakshman's pocket cartoon that made him and his common man national icons. There was a time when all the maddening everyday inconveniences caused by the city administration were, so past tense of is or are is were. So, caught brilliantly by Lakshman to empathize with the woes of the ordinary citizen, India learned to wake up with morning tea and a rueful laugh, you know rueful is painful, sorrowful over the common man's travails. The common man became a habit, later an addiction. The Times of India fully exploited Lakshman's popularity and both the newspaper and the cartoonist jointly thrived. Now, um, this is a revision of past tense. And now, I am going to give you some exercises based on that, please look at the slide. And the highlighted words, they are not uh, 
of, of course, they are not uh, um, past tense. Look at the words. I want you to look at these words and then from the text give synonyms. So, synonyms of the highlighted words and choose them, pick them from the text. Here I am just give you, giving you the meanings of the words that the, uh, the words that you find in the text. So, practice your vocabulary here. Her garments are known for their skillful embroidery. So, let us solve them. In the previous text, we have seen dexterous brushwork. So, it is dexterous, skillful. He has traveled across the country, across. So, the length and breadth of the country, it's the past, the word is given there. M. S. Subulakshmi is a legendary singer from India. So, you, you R. K. Lakshman, a national icon and legendary singer, M. S. Subulakshmi. So, iconic singer, icon. No life is ever free of suffering, travels, common man and his travels, his problems, his suffering. His business has been flourishing over the last few years. So, both the newspaper and the cartoonist thrived. So, flourishing is another word for thrived. All right. Now, um, we have also been doing lot of writing in our course and I would also like to revise some uh, uh, aspects of that. So, we, if you remember, we did paragraph. You remember that when people define paragraphs, I just want to revise it with you. So, when people define uh, paragraphs, they visualize the appearance of a paragraph. You remember, a paragraph is like this. So, we need to recognize that paragraph is not just a visual uh, icon okay, or a symbol, it is more than that. It is a unit that has a function, remember that and the function, what is it? It is to meet the needs of the readers by signaling the topic and its development. You should know that a paragraph may introduce new ideas while other develop uh, previously stated ideas or present a shift in space or direction. Salient features of a paragraph is that it is complete, it is unified and it is ordered, it has a coherence and it makes some sense to the readers. Now, I want you to read this paragraph and identify the central para, central idea. Also suggest breaks in paragraph and identify all the connectives. I will repeat breaks, what is the central idea, what is uh, and how would you break the paragraph in different paragraphs and identify the connectives, all the connectives. Now, let us move on to look at the slide. Central idea give a suitable title, break in paragraph, connectives. I would not be giving you the answers, now you should be able to discuss among yourselves. In the developed world, audiences are seeking for amusement and leisure. The pop music industry produces and packages pop music carefully in order to fulfill the consumer's requirements. According to the economic and industrial geographic, geographer Yuko Ayoma, just as in any other industry for a music genre to gain popularity, it necessitates an expansion to an export market near and far. Today's pop music industry developed as a mature both social and economic system. The interaction of global pop music breaks down the cultural and economic boundaries. In other words, globalization provides new opportunities for the pop music industry to expand the world market and gain huge profits. Furthermore, Balsis mentions the word transculture, which refers to the phenomenon that diverse mu pop, uh, popular music transformed in different cultures and nations. As a result, new music, new music style is created. For example, Chinese musicians combines, uh, combines a pop music with traditional Chinese opera and creates a new style of pop music called Chinese pop. This hybrid music style became popular among the nation and it also attracted people from other countries to enjoy Chinese style pop music. Balsis also just suggests given the new conditions created by the digitalization, visualization and the internet, artists at least in several developed countries now have 
more possibilities to communicate with the public by passing several of these institutions. Social media is a powerful cultural weapon, increases the communication and interaction between pop star and the public. People can get to know their icons life through television shows, magazines and Twitter. In this way, pop music fans feel closer to their idols. As a result, they are more willing to support them because of this kind of understanding. Now, um, let us revise articles and let us look at the slide. You remember articles a uh, and the. Okay, so, let us see how articles work. Here in the Truman Show, Jim Carrey has the role, please keep looking at the slide, has the role of his career as Truman Burbank, the unwitting star of a TV show. What is unwitting? Okay, that has trained 5000 hidden cameras on him since his birth 30 years ago. Everyone in Truman's life, parents, lovers, best friend, wife is an actor. Truman's seemingly idyllic world on the island of Sea Haven is really a giant dome and case studio controlled by I. Christoph, a barrett wearing director who has made his name as a uh, I televisionary by invading Truman's privacy 7 days a week, 24 hours a day. Thanks to the global audience that hangs on Truman's every move, his life is a cruel joke with Truman the only one not in on it. Look at this uh, use of um, phrasal verb also, um, an idiom not to be not in on it. Now, um, I would like you to find the meanings of unwitting, idyllic or idyllic, dome encased, cruel joke, barret and to hang on every word. I will repeat unwitting, idyllic, dome encased, cruel joke, barret and to hang on every word. Now, uh, look at this exercise, look at the slide and I want you to fill in the blanks with suitable articles. Soak dash a small quantity of wool in water, sat dash candle alight and put dash upside down jar over it. Mercury is dash smallest of dash major planets, weight is dash force of dash attraction of the earth on dash given mass. Dash diesel engine is more efficient than dash steam engine. I want you to fill in the appropriate articles. Please work it out in pairs. Now, let us move on to do another exercise and this is an example of the passive. The orange was dash in three equal parts. The beaker was dash into several pieces. The litmus paper was dash in the acid. The experiment has been dash in the lab. The project had cost the company almost 30 million dollars. So, how what would you say? The orange was cut in three equal parts. Remember, there is no cutted. You revise your regular and irregular verbs. The beaker was broken. The litmus paper was placed. The experiment has been set up. The project has cost. So, it is not costed, it is not cutted, it is not putted, it is not capted. Please remember all these and re keep revising whatever we have been doing all this while all these weeks. Now, let us move on and I want you to fill in the blanks. Look at this exercise. Fill in the blanks using did, do, done, does, doing. He dash not go to the office today. The food was dash to perfection. Um, the meaning should be cooked thoroughly. This is a dash, it your, your self exercise, they dash not come here often. The whole thing dash have a familiar ring, this is your own dash. Now, he 
did not go to the office, we do not say he did not went, he did not go to the office or he did not eat his lunch today, but not did not eat, so that is a rule. The food was done to perfection, not did to perfection, done to perfection is an idiomatic use of the language, done to perfection is to do something thoroughly. This is a do it yourself exercise, they do not come here very often, I do not like this, so do way of, this is the way we do this. The whole thing does have a familiar ring, this is your own doing. Now, let us move on and another set of auxiliaries if you remember has have. The Indian Ocean dash a high level salt content, why does diamond dash a high melting point? A, da a dam dash sometimes a length of over 100 kilometers, copper dash a reddish orange color, the pipes dash a thickness of 7 centimeters. So, where has and where have, please discuss it among yourselves. Now, uh, let us move on to revise our if clauses also known as conditionals, we remember conditionals describe the result of something that might happen uh, in the present or future or might have happened, but did not actually happen. So, if I had been there, I could have done something, remember and conditionals are uh, made using different English verb tenses, if it rains, we will cancel the picnic that is the future. Okay. If I had been there, I would have prevented this situation that is past, but I was not there. If you ask me, I can do that. So, conditional. Now, look at this slide and practice using conditionals. I will do the first one for you. Metal is left in the sun, it becomes hot. How do we do this? If metal is left in the sun, it becomes hot, there should be a comma in between. Glass falls on the floor, it breaks into pieces. Boat is made of paper, it will sink in deeper waters. Roads are not surfaced with tarmac, they cause damage to vehicles. Steel is coated with paint, it will resist corrosion. How do we do this? So, if glass falls on the floor, it breaks into pieces, if boat is made of paper, it will sink in deep waters, if roads are not surfaced with tarmac, they cause damage to the vehicles, if steel is coated with paint, it will resist corrosion. Practice your clauses also similarly. Now, look at this slide and I want you to practice your spellings. Look at environment, many a time we find students slipping in spellings. So, environment, government, look how it uses both N and M, gauge, gingham, hierarchy, hygienic, indiscriminate, maintenance, it is not maintenance. Many a time I find students uh, skipping the vowel E here, it is not maintenance, it is maintenance. Millennium, look at the use of double L and double N. Pronunciation and it is pronunciation, it is not pronunciation. We pronounce, but it is called pronunciation. Now, let us pronounce these words, these words look at the slide, they are commonly mispronounced words. Bicycle, it is not bicycle, chameleon, this is a sort of an animal and we also say changing colors like a chameleon, it is not chameleon, chameleon, camouflage, okay, not um, camouflage, okay, so camouflage, conscious, counterfeit, 
endeavor. Next word is entrepreneur. Extraordinary, it is not extraordinary, extraordinary. Pharmaceutical. So, practice your pronunciation. I have already guided you towards the book, better uh, English or better uh, spoken English and better English pronunciation. At the beginning of this course, all these things have been discussed. Please take a look at these links. During the course of uh, uh, English for or technical English for engineers, we have been revising plenty of uh, concepts and at the beginning itself I told you that uh, perhaps all these are familiar concepts. I am very sure that you have done auxiliaries and nouns and tenses and word formation, all these things. Um, at some stage of your, of your schooling or your graduation, that this course was meant to give you a better understanding and refreshing the way English is used. And one constant endeavor on my part was to help you improve the quality of your reading. Please remember and this is something that I must have told you earlier also and I am telling you this again. If you do not read enough and you do not practice speaking, then there is no way that you can write or understand things better. So, read a lot. Watch, if you want to improve your English language, then you have to watch programs in that language. If you want to learn French, for example, you have to watch French language and you have to um, sort of uh, immerse yourself in that language. So, this is the way you have come here to learn English. Please practice English. Do not let this course be the end of every attempt to learn English. Remember, with practice, things only get better. So, thank you very much for being with me, and I wish you all the best for your exam, the final exam, and also in all your career endeavors. Thank you.